All right. Welcome back to the Hairdresser Strong Show. My name is Robert and I'm your host. Uh, This is Sean Leonard. He's back with me again. Last time we talked, we heard his hair journey from aspiring stylists to salon owners and all the lessons that he learned and the things that he contributes to becoming a salon owner and getting to his dream. Uh, Today, we're going to hear about the pros and cons of salon ownership and uh, why he loved it and why he necessarily didn't love it. And uh, but we're going to hear from him. So uh, what's up, Sean? Will you... um, just give us a little quick introduction for those that did not hear your first episode. Yes, I'm Sean Leonard. Um, I live here in Alexandria, just outside of Washington, D.C. I've been a, a stylist in Washington, D.C. for like tw- over 25 years now. And just cool. It's part of the cool. journey. Okay. So uh, Sean Leonard is uh, local to uh, DMV and he uh, owned a salon in Georgetown called Easel. Uh, how long did you own that salon for? It was just under 10 years, actually. What did you love about salon, this being a salon owner? Um, the, the, I loved teaching. I loved creating a, an environment that was very educational and giving, giving uh, to my staff, um, as well as the biggest thing for me and how I grew my business the most was through something called social entrepreneurship. And, uh, that, that was giving back to community as a whole. And, um, and at the same time, you know, it, it, it's like a weird way of when you give back, it's like, obviously, uh, people start to take notice and marketing happens as a result of that. So that was a big part of our ethos. So um, were your staff members able to build their book like pretty easily? Do you have like this windfall of new client traffic? We did. Um, and then obviously the recession of 2008 happened at the same time. So we went, we went basically from this like, crazy, insane, you know, vertical incline of business growth to all of a sudden it just like flatlined. And it wasn't that it was bad at the time in 2008, but it was the economy just, just bottomed out. You know? Yeah. So why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about like what happens um, over time as a business owner? Like, you know, if you can build people, you know, do they stay? Why do they, if they don't stay, why do they leave? If they do stay, what type of, um, what type of demands uh, do they, do they, do they want in order to stay, you know, give some, give some insight to like some of the challenges that you're going to deal with as a salon owner. For sure. As an owner, I, I was straight up about commission rate from, right from go. When I interviewed, I would say, here's your quote service charges and whatever else you and know. healthcare as well. I and education. Know. Those were up front. And, you know, and I found there's a generational gap in mentality from hairdressers and millennials are creative and they're great. And I respect it. And I'll say it this way. So I spent thousands and thousands of dollars on maintaining um, websites and relevancy. And then my happiest employees had their own website and their own everything going on on the side. And, and, and I asked them because I was, they were happy and I asked them why. And they were like, well, I'm helping you by helping me. And I'm in my own mind going, and you basically are able to just pick up and walk away with everything I have. Right. So they're developing their own uh, brand uh, by utilizing your space and your, uh, brand, your brand to drive traffic into them. Sure. What that means is that the old school uh, power dynamic of a salon owner having control over the clientele, like the book of clients and the phone numbers and stuff, it's not really a competitive advantage anymore. Um, So did you experience people building up uh, uh, in your salon and then leaving you to go out on their own or? Yeah. So, so the initial, the initial, I had two walkouts happen when I had, I had my salon. Okay. And and I didn't realize that I had somebody within my salon that was kind of a mole actually uh, feeding that other person. Um, And basically I became like the trainer in essence, for this other salon. And that's my shortfall for not knowing what the carrot was, you know, gotcha. Uh, gotcha. at the time. But, uh, you know, in my, in my view, like looking back now, our industry as a whole is 
is evolving and I don't necessarily think it's necessarily for the best. Okay. I mean, it could be, I mean, California has done it well, you know, with, with booth renting and becoming individual ownership within a salon, California does it the best, but they've always done it the best out West. You walk into a salon, it's seamless. You would not know that it's individuals within a business, but on the East coast, we're like samurais when it comes to booth renting and, you know, being individuals. It's like, that's my product. That's my state. That's mine, 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 you know, kind of that, okay. that attitude. And it looks that way. And it starts to become that way within a, within the booth renting atmosphere. It, yeah. it, Cause egos are involved and individualism. And I don't, I don't know if that's millennial or what, you know, I don't, I don't know, but um that's i think we're in that space of time right now within the east coast environment within the within the hair industry so what i hear uh what i'm hearing is that you know the current current situation with the salon structure for anybody looking to open up a salon um so we have a commission-based salon where people are employees and they operate under one flag uh, one banner and um they rely on the business owner to take care of all the administrative functions and the, you know, uh, the books and payroll and ordering supplies, et cetera. Or you could be in a booth rental situation where you're responsible for uh, make, keeping your supplies stocked and, um, and doing your own books and dealing with your own payments, et cetera. And uh, right now, uh, what's happening, especially on the East Coast, because, yeah, on the West Coast, booth rental is more, more popular. I've noticed... Uh, more and more salons are switching over to be in booth rental around here. And, um, you know, maybe that's something that a new stylist that's looking to open up a salon is um, they should consider like, you know, do you really want to do a commission based business? You know, like I was just actually did a consultation for somebody who's looking to open up a salon and they're asking about different business models and different ways to skin the cat. And, um, you know, they want to know if they should do like, um, a booth rental or commission, you know, commission is so much more enticing because you get a piece of everybody's like a big chunk of everybody's pie and uh, a booth rental is, you know, in a lot of scenarios, uh, you do the math and it's tough to make much money off of a booth rental situation. Right. And so, you know, how do you, how, how, if there was a way to run a business as a salon, you know, what, if someone think, says, I want to do a commission-based salon, they're just looking to build a team. Like, what would your advice be to them? Yeah. So, um, obviously when I came to the conclusion where I had to, I closed my salon, I mean, uh, you know, I closed my salon because I, I went through a personal crisis of divorce and such like that, you know, yeah. and, and yeah. looking back at it, looking back at it, you know, I had a lot of shoulda, coulda, wouldas. And, and, um, part of that was, maybe I should have been booth rental, you know, like maybe that, that, cause it was, it was evolving into that. And, um, you know, the idea of that is, and at the end of the day, as a booth rent booth rental salon, as the owner, you're the landlord and it's being a landlord. And if you've ever owned a property, it's the same thing. You're the landlord, you're the landlord. And, 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 you know, the, the, the difference of West Coast, East Coast is this, that the East Coast or West Coast, it's seamless. They do it in a way it's seamless. It's like from go, we're going to open up a salon. It's all bit booth rental, but, you know, I'm going to take care of whatever it is. We're going to have one or three product lines for the whole salon. And everybody's going to contribute towards education. It's a team, even though you're an individual at the end of the day, it's still a team. Now that's the ultimate booth rental environment. Right. But East coast wise, we have these big corporations that are selling these salon suites. Cause it's like, you know, it, it, for them it, at the end of the day, it's about, um, commercial real estate. I happen to cut one of the guy's hair who owns loft and all this stuff, you know, and, and he's, it's commercial real estate, right? He, he's looking at it. Like, 
I have an X amount of space, but within the space, I'm going to get so much rent off of everybody. Like, is there anything else that uh, you'd want to, you know, like any last like, pieces of advice before anybody that's thinking about opening a salon, anything that you would like, you might want to, you know, make sure that they know like words of advice. For, for ownership or opening a salon and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, like a person, a young stylist or a stylist that's, uh, you know, thinking about opening up a salon or sure. in the process of it. Sure. Um, I, would, I, would, I would arguably say this, um, you know, being, you know, we're a hairdresser. We're a strange breed, you know, we're uh, it's 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 hard to herd cats as we're the cats, you know, as, as, as hairdressers. Um, and, and it's this tension between artistry and business. And at the end of the day, you're both always, it's not just about the artistry of hair. You're also a business within a business. And, and obviously if you want to own a salon at the end of the day, just because you're busy and people love you, and you're making a lot of money, that's not necessarily the next step to own a salon. Gotcha. It, it's, it takes a lot more to own a salon than to just be busy, well-liked, making money, and all that kind of stuff. You better love business. You better love marketing. You better love social media. You better love that awkward moment of firing someone. Gotcha. You better love it. You better love having a handbook and creating a handbook for your employees. You better love living by that handbook. That's, gotcha. that's my advice. Good. I like that advice. You know, I've, yeah. I think that's, I think you said it very well. I don't even need to re reiterate it. That was great. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much. And um, next time we'll hear about if you d would do things differently. And, uh, you know, if I knew what I know now. Uh, so we'll, until next time, uh, I'll see you later. Thank you again. Thank you, Robert. All right. Take care. Okay.